Yo, what's up guys, AFC Udino here and welcome to a new video. Uh, today I'm going to start a new series. Uh, it's basically uh, me giving you guys competitive analysis on certain Pokemon. And yeah, basically I'm just giving you guys my opinion on a certain Pokemon and I'll give you guys some movesets as well so you can start bringing them out uh, on the PvP ladder. So today uh, we'll, be start, we'll be starting with Burnape. Uh, I just wanted to start off with the same monkey. I, I I love using this Pokemon because this Pokemon is so first up. But let's start, guys, um, by opening up the statistics page. As you guys can see in the OU that are uh, in the OU statistics, Infernape has a 7.31 uh, play rate. Not super high, but his 51.6 win rate is pretty decent. Eh? I can take some credit <laughs> there, as I did win a lot of game with Inferno. I'm kidding, guys. <laughs> but yeah, looking at this, guys, um, Inferno, um, his usage is pretty average. Um, but yeah, his most used item is Light Warp. Uh, yeah, the mix set of Inferno is really strong as well. Um, Blaze is the most used ability. Uh, it's because Iron Fist is not really accessible. <laughs> It's not easy to get Iron Fist because it takes a lot of money. And honestly, guys, uh, I don't think it's worth spending that much money in Iron Fist. As Close Combat and Flare Blade still do more damage than Drain Punch and Fire Punch with Iron Fist. So, <laughs> um, yeah, there's a there's one scenario I would probably consider Iron Fist. But if you are on a budget, then I would never go for Iron Fist. Uh, the most nature the most used nature is naive uh, it's because of the life orb because infernip is mostly used as a mixed attacker and yeah let's let's just open up uh, the pokedex here and we're gonna take a look at his stats because let's see does it show his stats here somewhere base stats ah base stats so um he has 108 base speed if you actually compare this, oh, hold up, you cannot have two things open. But if you actually compare this to Mian Xiao, uh, it's actually faster than Mian Xiao, which is really huge. Uh, his special attack and attack stat are pretty decent as well. They are even, that's why he's such a great mix attacker. But yeah, when comparing Infernip to other fire type Pokemon in in OU, uh, specifically, Infernip has no issue standing out, uh, being the only one in the tier to possess a secondary fighting type. Because uh, this offers great coverage and makes Stealth Rock do neutral damage because uh, usually fighting types resist Stealth Rock and uh, fire types are weak to Stealth Rock, so that evens it out, uh, making it easier for Infernip to stay in the game longer. Uh, but yeah, with an equally good attack and special attack uh, combined with a huge move pull, making it very difficult to switch into uh, Infernape. So Infernape has also access to the stab priority moves Mach Punch and Vacuum Wave in case um, he's running into faster Pokemon. So there are so many options uh, with Infernape. But yeah, that's where the next thing um, can become an issue because the huge move pull can also be seen as a weakness. Uh, the West Infernape can only use uh, four moves, and certain Pokemon can completely check or wall Infernape depending on the move set. Uh, so another weakness is that sending out Infernape is also really difficult because he doesn't like to switch into an attack. So having a way to bring in uh, Infernape safely uh, through maybe teleport, U-turn, or Volt Switch is usually advised when playing uh, Infernape. But yeah, to go back on his speed stat, guys, uh, Infernip has a 108 base sp a speed stat, uh, which means he's going to be faster than Miancha, which has a, I believe, 105 base speed. And this also means that he's going to be faster than uh, Garchomp and Hydreigon. And outspeeding those Pokemon is really huge because uh, you don't want to be, you don't want your whole team to be slower than that Pokemon. And yeah, uh, Miensho is one of the most used fighting type Pokemon in OU. So having a Pokemon that outspeeds Miensho is is really necessary. It's kind of necessary. And yeah, um, 
that's basically it about Inferno. I guess we can go over a few movesets uh, with Infernape, um, and then we can talk about how we use this Infernape. So what I'll do is I'm gonna open up. <laughs> it's the first time me doing this. I still, ha I still have to figure out a format on how I to how I want to make these videos, but I can start with doing this. Um, as you guys can see, uh, this. Uh, this is an Infernip set. This is the mixed um, Infernip set. I'm not gonna talk about EVs in this in these kind of videos because EVs are mainly preference. Like uh, when I add EVs onto Pokemon, uh, it's gonna be to a specific team or to do a specific job. So in general, if you don't know what EVs you or what EVs you want to take, just go max max or so like max speed, max special attack, and then the rest into attack or max speed max attack and the rest into whatever uh so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna explain the evs in this in this video and not in none of these videos if you are interested in what kind of evs i am using though you can definitely check out my patreon as uh, on patreon i show the poker pages of my team and um, basically you guys get to see the evs as well and i also have additional information on why i chose to go with those certain amount of evs because in a lot of cases i don't go max max i go like for a specific amount of evs and it's to outspeed certain stuff it's to live certain hits it's to uh be able to kill certain pokemon at certain hp and yeah, i usually explain that on patreon and it's like i can make i can add evs onto here but um there's there's no right answer on uh there's no one right answer on which evs uh, you should take so that's why i'm not gonna go over evs anyway uh this set close combat over hidden power rise thunder punch with the item life orb um like we mentioned before uh we saw that Naive was the most used nature, Life Orb was the most used item, and this is why. Um, Infernape, um, I prefer to go Overheat. I, it's the strongest available fire type attack aside from Blast Burn. Don't burn Blast Burn in PvP, guys. <laughs> Don't do it. And Overheat usually kills something. And if something s switches in that doesn't resist the attack and we don't kill him, we can knock him out with close combat usually afterwards. Hidden Power Rise gives us insane coverage versus dragon types and ground types mainly Gliscor, uh salamence those kind of pokemon garchomp and thunder punch is just some nice coverage against water type pokemon mainly pelipper when you're facing rain and uh, then being able to thunder punch him is really nice as well and yeah like did you try to get in infernip safely uh, like i mentioned th through uh a u-turn a volt switch a teleport or a good prediction and getting into a Pokemon that can actually hurt, and then you just go for a strong attack. And with this coverage, you you just hit so many types. Uh, like these attacks are four different types, so you just cover so much stuff. Uh, some other options, though, uh, you can run Grass Knot uh, to m do more damage on Hippowden, for example. Uh, you can even run Nasty Plot with. Um, but then I wouldn't run naive. Then I would go fully specially offensive with timid nature. Um, I'm not gonna cover this that set though, because it's a bit meh in my opinion. It's a bit meh going nasty plot. And yeah, um, that's basically this infernip set. Let's go to the next one, being the choice band infernip set. You guys have seen me use this this set a lot, and it's so freaking powerful. Like, even a defensive Rotom Wash with max HP, max defense is gonna get 2 hit KO'd by close combat. And like I said, his speed tier in this is really amazing. Uh, because it outspeeds Mian Shao, Garchomp, Hydreigon. And so when you get it in against those Pokemon through a Volt Switch from Rotom, through a U-Turn from Scizor, and getting your Infernape against those kind of Pokemon. If Garchomp is weakened, close combat is just gonna blow him back. Uh, you do need damage on Garchomp. And on the other end, uh, even if you cannot kill your opponent in one hit, you, you can get a choice bandit U-turn on them, and next time they will be in range of that close combat, uh, which is so freaking powerful. And then we have Mark Punch in the back for Pokemon like Excadrill, Weavile, Pokemon that outspeeds 
Inferno uh, Excadrill slower, but with the Sandstorm, it's gonna be faster, and then you can use Mach Punch. Uh, Cloyster as well, we, we resist Ice Shard, so we can use Mach Punch after he uses uh, Shell Smash. So, really a good option to have Mach Punch. You could also run um, Stone Edge instead, or maybe Thunder Punch, another move instead of Mach Punch. Um, I would usually keep U-Turn when you you are using a choice item. And yeah, just get it. Try to get it in against Hydreigon. And when you have it in for Hydreigon, you can just U-Turn. Because if they stay in, they still take super effective damage. If they switch out, you keep the momentum. So Choice Band, definitely a strong set. Next set, Choice Scarf. Um, I, I know some players are not a fan of the Choice Scarf. But honestly, they are not a fan because of the wrong reasons. Um, their main uh, their main point of not liking Choice Scarf is that with that with the Choice Scarf, he's doing way too his damage is super low. It is low, yeah. But you're not using a Choice Scarf to to wall break through certain Pokemon. You're using a Choice Scarf to kill fast Pokemon, and that's why. Um, I like to run a Speed Nature on Choice Scarf as well. Uh, people like to run Adamant on certain Choice Scarfers, Modest on certain Choice Scarfers. But you don't want... When you're using a Choice Scarf, you always want to be faster than your opponent. So you don't want to lose a Speed Die either. And if you're going Adamant, you're always going to lose a Speed Die if your opponent is running Jolly. So that's why we're running the Jolly Nature with the Choice Scarf. And the reason why Choice Scarf suddenly becomes necessary... Um, not, not, so, not specifically on Infernape, but uh, on uh, on any team at, in general, is because of the addition of Superior. Uh, Superior actually outspeeds Gengar, and Gengar was already one of the fastest Pokemon in the game. Gengar outspeeds Infernape, so uh, to give you guys an idea, um, Superior, the only viable Pokemon that actually outspeed um, Superior are Weavile, Crobat. Other Pokemon need a choice card. Like you can obviously you have shit like Swallow. <laughs> Other crazy shit that could outspeed Superior, but even Ductra with Aerial is not gonna do much damage. Jolten with hidden power is not gonna do much damage to um not gonna do much damage to Superior. And in return they're gonna get destroyed by Leaf Storm, so uh, like the only viable Pokemon are Weavile and Bro, but you cannot always run those Pokemon, so that's why you need something that's fast. Otherwise, you might get wiped by um, by Leaf Storm, like contrary Leaf Storm. If your whole team is slower than him, because uh, you cannot always choice Band and Scissor cannot knock out Superior at full HP, and Scissor is gonna die to Hidden Power Fire. That's why I think Choice Guard and Infernip is so really nice. And also, guys, uh, let me actually show you. Um, I just want to I just want to show you guys. Hold up, let me remove this. I want to show you guys Garchomp. Uh statistics Garchomp, right? The most used item on, on Garchomp right now is Choice Scarf. Remember Infernape is faster than uh Garchomp. So, having Scarf Infernape guys is really nice in, in the sense that it outspeeds Garchomp with the Choice Scarf as well. Uh, that way, uh, you always have a Pokemon Fast and a Choice of Guard Guard Jump as well. And also, guys, um, let me check Mian Shao because I've been using Scarf Mian Shao lately as well. And I think it's also went a bit up in usage. I think Life Orb is still the most used item, but the next most used item on Mian Shao is Choice Scarf. Remember, guys, Inferno being faster than. Um, than Mian Shao. And the reason, guys, um, Choice Scarf is more used is because, again, Superior. Superior is so freaking fast, and you do need something that outspeeds it. And you cannot always run Weevil, like I said. So, in that sense, having a Pokemon, Infernape, having a Choice Scarf, he can one shot Superior. Uh, if you're using Iron Fist Fire Punch, it still knocks out Superior. Obviously, Flare Blitz is gonna destroy him. But still, U Turn is still super effective. Um, that's why I've been using uh, Mian Shao more lately as well. But the thing with Mian Shao is, Mian Shao doesn't one hit KO Superior at full HP with close combat. And, and 
Infernape actually does that. That's why uh, Infernape can be better in those kind of situations. Uh, and yeah, uh, let's go over the moves. So close combat. Um, if you're using Iron Fist, you can use Fire Punch. If you don't want to take the recoil, you'll mostly be spamming close combat anyway. I have U-Turn. Again, um, U-Turn. You can often lead off with Infernape. Go for a U-Turn. Uh, just to see what they do. Get some chip damage up. If they lead off with Guard Jump, you get the U-Turn chip on them. Uh, and yeah, if they lead off with a Rotom or something, you get U-Turn off on them. It's just really good. Uh, that's why... And that's... You all, you also no, never be locked into a move. And lastly, I have Stone Edge. I don't have Thunder Punch, even though Thunder Punch hits Gyarados really well. The reason we run Stone Edge, guys, is it gives him the best coverage, in my opinion. Stone Edge hits Flying types, but it also heals, hits Volcarona. It's it hits Dragon types, which Thunder Punch will be neutral against if they are partly Flying type, for example, Dragonite, Salamence, and uh, Stone Edge can crit as well. Um, you can obviously run Rock Slide, but Rock Slide doesn't do the damage it needs to do. And like I said, Choice Scarf Infernip also outspeeds Volcarona after a Quiver Dance. It's a really good check to those Dragon Dance sweepers as well. Uh, be Dragon Knight uh, is gets outspeed by Infernip. He lives extreme speed from, from Full HP if he really needs to. And again, that Stone Edge is going to be more valuable than Rock Slide after they get get up a Quiver Dance or... Uh, Qu Quiver Dance doesn't really matter because Rock Slide is still going to kill Volcarona. But when you're facing Dragon Knight and Gyarados who just Dragon Dance stopped, uh, you don't want to rely on a flinch and you cannot even flinch Dragon Knight. So you want to be able to do as, as much damage as possible and Stone Edge is doing exactly that. Also, um, being able to crit them, of course. So that's going to be the Choice Scarf set. Like I've, had a, I've had a lot of success with the Choice Scarf set. And yeah, again, people make the point that it doesn't do much damage. But next to a Choice Scarf, you usually have someone that does a lot of damage. Uh, you give that roll as a wall breaker to someone else instead of Infernape. That's the that's the point of team building. So I get because Infernape doesn't do have doesn't have to do much damage against walls. It just needs to be able to kill fast Pokemon. Uh, so hopefully I can get th that point across to you guys. And now let's go over to the next set. Um, now we're going into a bit of niche sets. This is a uh, Focus Sash, Stealth Rock, uh, Infernape. Um, you can run this on hyper offense. The, the idea is basically you get up Stealth Rock turn one. If they go, f if you're facing a guard jump or something, and they go for earthquake, you'll you'll be at one HP. You click Endeavor, and if they somehow let, allow you, if you have Endeavor, you can Mock Punch uh, to get a priority kill. You can also run Flare Blitz instead of Mock Punch, uh, so you can actually die. Uh, so your opponent cannot defuck, which is also pretty interesting. And we have Taunt, obviously. Uh, usually on a Suicide Stealth Rock lead, you do want Taunt. Look at Aerodactyl, look at Skarmory. Uh, they are using Taunt uh, to prevent their opponent from getting up their own hazards. Um, so you can definitely use this on Hyper Offense. I wouldn't use this too much. I still think Aerodactyl does this job way better. Uh, because he outspeeds more, more things. Uh, Skarmory does this way better because he has a sturdy built in and then can run a uh, mental herb so he cannot get taunted and has more access to more hazards. But you can definitely use this. Lastly, uh, we have the defensive Infernape. Um, I have it as a jolly nature right now, but the defensive Infernape, that's the only thing I would consider going for Iron Fist. Because in those kind of stages, when, with a defensive Infernape, you don't want to run Flare Blitz, you don't want to run Close Combat, you want to stay as bulky as possible. So you usually carry Fire Punch, but with the addition of the new update, you actually, Infernape actually has access to Drain Punch. And that adds up really well with the Iron Fist. And then we're going with Slack Off, obviously for recovery. Will-O-Wisp uh, to burn things like um, Garchomp, to burn things like Scizor, those kind of Pokemon. Hit Bowden. And then being able to taunt them. And yeah, taunt obviously with Drain Punch. You could also go for Toxic and Fire Punch, which gives you other coverage. Um, it just depends on what you want to do with Infernape. Um, this is just an example set. And yeah, 
These kind of sets usually work well against uh, Weavile, because yeah, there aren't many Pokemon. <laughs> Not many of the common walls like Weavile. Uh, I could hip out and it's weak to ice type attacks. Um, Mandaverse is weak to ice type attacks. Uh, things like Jellicent are weak to dark type attacks. So in that sense, having an Infernape might be cool. It can be good against Scissor, but I've noticed a lot of Scissors actually running Aerial A's. Some still run Acrobatics. So if you switch an Infernape to a flying type attack like that, uh, you become really low, and if the, if it's Choice Bandit Aerial, it's boosted by Technician. It's gonna do a lot of damage to you. Uh, I think if you are Impish, you can go with Impish as well. But the thing is, if you're using Impish, guys, um, then you are locked into a defensive set. And yeah, Iron Fist can definitely still be used for um, offensive sets. Like my Choice Scarf Infernape, uh, which... You guys will see in my videos uh, is is actually Iron Fist because I'm using Fire Punch over Flare Blitz, um, so that's why I'm that's why I chose Jolly because I'm also looking at an economic perspective. Because if you're using Impish, then you can only use it for that, but you can still use it's it's expensive um, uh, creating making them hidden ability. Uh, that's basically the point I want to get across. So yeah, those are basically the sets. You can try them out, um, and if you don't know what EVs you should take, uh, just go with max speed, max attack, or max speed, max special attack for the mixed one, or uh, go with max HP, max defense for the, <laughs> or max a max speed, max HP, or something for the defensive uh, Infernape. Uh, and otherwise, you can check out my Patreon uh, to see what I am using on my EVs and why i use those evs anyway guys um those are the sets uh we can go over a few good team options uh, like a few good team options i like are rotom wash because obviously fire water gives you a bunch of coverage um rotom wash will be your water resist while being super effective against water type pokemon because he's an electric type as well uh being able to volt switch against stuff like hydreigon to get in um infernape so really nice. Uh, next we have Hydreigon as a partner. Hydreigon also really a good partner. Uh, just because I was, if you're using a Choice Scarf or Choice Band set, you're using a physical Infernape. Then you have Hydreigon as a special attacker. And Hydreigon can take on certain Pokemon uh, like Jellicent, for example. Hippowden, Gliscor, Golbat, those kind of Pokemon. Because Hydreigon can taunt them, can Dragon Pulse them. And just be annoying. Uh, next to have Superior. Superior really good against bulky water Pokemon. Uh, for example, Milotic, Jellicent, those kind of Pokemon. Being able to do super effective damage against them. Obviously, also slowing down things with Glare. Because if Superior gets a Glare off on something, uh, that would usually outspeed Infernape. Uh, being, I don't know, uh, <laughs> uh, what, Crobat or something. <laughs> This kind of Pokemon, then uh, he's gonna be faster so suddenly. Um, also, Ductrio as well. Can glare Ductrio. Um, Reuniclus can be a good partner. Because um, Reuniclus does really well for just bulky Pokemon like, again, Hippowden, Gliscor, Golbat. Those are the Pokemon that <laughs> can usually take on Infernip, depending on the set, of course. And we've all obviously being a good partner as well. As Weavile uh, does take care of certain Psychic types with Night Slash Pursuit. Um, obviously certain Ground types, being able to hit them with Ice type attacks. And yeah, um, those are some options. You can definitely look at the Pokemon Statistic here, thing here as well. Hold up. Uh, if you are looking for certain partners um, for Infernape. These are definitely some good partners as well, and like I mentioned, Superior is there, Rotom is there, Weevil is there, so... Uh, you can use that and some counters, checks to Infernape. Obviously, again, it depends on the set, but Garchomp can be a counter with Choice Scarf if you're facing a mixed set or... Uh, not a counter. The difference between a counter and a check is a counter can actually sw switch in multiple times and kill or force out Infernape, and a check can... Uh, basically revenge kill Infernape and Choice Scarf Infernape uh, Choice Scarf Garchomp can kind of revenge kill Infernape 
Uh, Jellicent can take on pretty much any Infernape set as long as he doesn't run Cross Knot. Because if he is using a mix set, um, a mix set is usually not running max attack. Uh, the Thunder Punch won't be able to 2 hit KO the Jellicent, which is important as well. And Duck Trio, well, Infernape cannot switch first to Duck Trio, and then Duck Trio just clicks Earthquake. So that basically is. It. When Duck Trio comes in against Infernape, Infernape is basically dead. Golbat. Um, yeah, Golbat can completely wall Infernape. Hippowden, if Hippowden is not mixed, uh, like Hippowden takes on any physical set. And even a mixed set, as long as he's not running cross, cannot knock out uh, Hippowden from full HP. So if your Hippowden is full HP, you can just kill him with Earthquake. Same goes for Gliscor. Gliscor needs to be wor wary about the Hidden Power Rise, but if Infernape. Uh, Over is also going to do a lot, but if Infernape is a physical attacker, then obviously Gliscor is going to wall him as well. And I think Milotic completely walls Infernape too. Um, if you are a physical. If you are a bolt Milotic, and uh, you don't even, um, I guess Joyce Band you might actually need Flame Orb, um, and otherwise, if you are if you're first just a mixed Infernape, uh, then even then bolt Milotic can still completely well ape, because like I said, mixed ape is Life Orb, so Milotic is just gonna recover up, and every time Infernape attacks, uh, Infernape is gonna take damage. But yeah, that's basically the, the analysis of Infernip. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something from this. Definitely try out some sets. Um, like I recommend the mixed choice band or choice scarf set. Those are the most consistent ones. Yeah, you, can, you can mess around with other sets as well. Like you can Infernip gets access to Swords Dance, um, to Nasty Plot. So there's definitely a lot of options. And like I said, he has Vacuum Wave and Mark Punch. So. There are some def there are definitely some sweeper sets with him as well, but I don't think those are quite consistent. So yeah, uh, that's basically it about Infernape. Let me know down in the comments if you actually like these series, this series, and maybe let me know which Pokemon you would like me to cover next. So yeah, with that all being said, though, I hope you had a fun. I hope you had a good experience watching this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, guys. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Actually. Only 40% of my viewers are actually subscribed to the channel. And I would like to go towards that 5k uh, at the end of 2023. I think the, the 3k is going to be in the bucket uh, within this year. So I, I honestly think we can get that 5,000 uh, before the end of 20, 2023. And yeah, join our Discord server as well. Uh, it's getting more active uh, these days. Uh, more people talking in the Discord. And I'm more active on Discord as well. So join the Discord, link in the description as well. And yeah, if you are interested in the Pokemon I am using, um, any information on the te teams and why I chose to go with certain Pokemon and certain moves and certain EVs, everything, check out my Patreon. You are, you are also supporting me a bit financially, um, which I definitely, it definitely helps me in my daily life as well. And yeah, with that all being said, I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace out.